And we're back guys, Coach Carroll again here. Hey, don't, you should not be watching this video if you have not tried this problem. So try it yourself first, okay? And if you don't know what you're doing still and you talk to your friends, why is this not going? Yekdaka, guys. Okay, now we're back. Looking better. Okay. So, if you talk to your friends, they still don't know what's going on. Find new friends, and then you can watch this video. Okay. This is vector addition problem again. 2D vector addition. We have two vectors where we know the magnitude and the direction of both vectors. And part A of this problem asks us to find the resultant vector R, so that means the sum of these two vectors that are applied to the bracket. Now these are two force vectors. Notice they have units of newtons there. Okay, And part A asks us to express the answer of the resultant vector in Cartesian form. Okay, Now we're not told whether we have to do this graphically or analytically so analytical is the approach that we want to use it's easier and faster okay so we'll sketch I'll, I'll just use this picture here it'll save me some time okay remember when we're adding vectors so the analytical approach is we want to just simply add the vectors now to do that we want to divide each vector into a component form okay now I just said f1 and f2 let's Let's label these. Let's say this is F1, and let's say this one is F2. Okay. So the first step, let's write F1 in component form. So F1. Now, F1. Here's F1. Let's show its components. This could be the Y component. And then this would be the x component. Okay? All right. F1, x. And this here is F, whoop, not F2. Sorry about that. F1, y. Okay. Now, notice in this problem, the coordinate system that's defined is not what is not horizontal as what we normally see. Normally in problems, you see the X is pointing to the right and positive Y is pointing up. But this is not always the case. The coordinate system is something that you define to help you make the problem easier, to help you keep your vector straight. You have to have a coordinate system. Now, the coordinate system they give us in this problem is actually tilted at an angle of 20 degrees. Okay. So, that's okay, it's no problem. So we want to write F1 in component form. So the X component here is actually opposite of the angle 30. So we're going to use the magnitude of the vector, 150. And since the X component is opposite of this angle 30, I'll use sine, multiply it times the multiply the magnitude 150 times the sine of 30. That's the x component. Now is the x component positive or negative? Which way is it pointing? It's pointing back this way, and that is the negative x direction, because positive x direction is pointing this direction. So it's a negative. Okay, now what about the y component? The y component is here and that side is adjacent sorry that side is adjacent to the 30 degree angle so 150 times the cosine of 30 again cosine because the y component is adjacent to the 30 degree angle which is made with the hypotenuse okay and don't forget the component that's the j component and it's pointing in the positive positive y direction there. Now don't forget units on a vector. So there's F1 written in component form. Easy enough. Now let's write F2 in component form. Use a different color. 
So here's the vector f2. Here would be the x component then, and then here's the y component. There's, oops, sorry, this is f2. So f2x, and this is f2, y. Now notice I just made a right triangle right there. Right? There's the right angle. Okay. So let's get the x component. So the magnitude of f2 is 200. And the angle that we're given is 35 degrees is adjacent to the x component here. So 200 times the cosine of 35 I hat and we see that it's pointing in the positive x direction positive x that way okay now what about the y is it let's see if it's positive or negative well it's pointing up we see this vector is kind of is pointing up in the positive y direction so positive now the magnitude of the vector is 200 and now to get the y component we multiply times the sine of 35 because the y component is opposite opposite of this 35 degree angle. So opposite means the sine of 35 degrees j hat. Okay. So now when we add vectors, remember we can only add similar components. So let's add all the x components, which means these, that's i hat, and then add all the y components to get j hat. Those are the two j components. Now we can add these because they're the same units. Okay, so check your units. Remember, you can't add a newton and a kilonewton. Both of these are newtons, so it's okay to add. So break out your calculator and for the x component, do the negative, don't forget the negative, negative 150 times the sine of 30 plus the 200 times the cosine of 35 and you come out with 88.8 I have. And do the same thing for the y component. So the y component, I'm going to add a positive 150 times the cosine of 30 plus the y component of vector f2 just 200 times the sine of 35. Add those two together and you get 244.6 j hat newtons. Okay, so there's the answer to part A. We've determined the vector r in Cartesian form. That's another name for rectangular form. It's the same thing. Okay. Now, part B asks to just simply find the magnitude of the resultant force. Well, that's easy enough because we already have a resultant force in component form. So to do part B, I'll just simply take the magnitude of this vector here. So to find the magnitude, take the square root of the, you want to square each component, add it together, take the square root of that sum. So the square root of the 88.8 .8 squared plus the 244.6 squared. Those are the two components. And we can get a magnitude of 260.2 newtons. That's the answer to part B there. Okay, now part C asked to express the resultant vector. So let's express this vector r here as a magnitude multiplied by a unit vector. So what does what does that mean? Well, they're asking us to express this vector r as the magnitude times a unit vector in that direction. So let's look at what this is. So Say when we add these two vectors, this parallelogram rule, there's the vector r. Okay, and it had a magnitude of, or was it, 260.2 newtons. Okay, now, 
I can get a this stands for a unit vector in the R direction. Remember a unit vector has a length of 1. So it's a, it's a vector in the direction of R but that has a length of 1. So that's the unit vector in the R direction. So if I take the unit vector in the R direction and multiply it times the magnitude then I get the vector R. Okay, sorry, so the unit vector in the R direction multiplied times the magnitude of R gives me the vector R. Well, I already know this. That's 260.2 times something, times this unit vector in the R direction. Now, how do I find this? Well, let's just solve this equation, right? Because I know, I know this in component form. And I know the magnitude and the unit vector is what I'm looking for. So you can find a unit vector always by taking the vector itself simply divided by the magnitude of the vector and that will allow you to find the unit vector in the direction of that vector. So the math to do that, this is the boring part here. So 88.8 divided by 260.2 that's going to be the i hat component and the j hat component 244.6 divided by the 260.2 j hat now what are the units here well let's look how we found it we took the vector r divided by the magnitude of r so what are the units of the magnitude of R, they're newtons, and what's the units of, I'm sorry, units of the magnitude of R is newton, and what's the units of the vector R? Newtons as well, so they cancel out, so a unit vector has, is, is, is unitless, so no units here, it's unitless. Okay, now if I got a number for these, then I could write this, 0.3, for one i hat plus 0 0.940 j hat and this is newtons now the reason i have newtons here is because the magnitude r is in newtons so there is the vector r expressed as a magnitude times a unit vector okay now see i have the i component and the j component on the unit vectors. So that's the answer to part C. Now what about part D? Part D says calculate the angle that this vector R makes with a positive X and Y axis as shown. Well, when we found R, we found R using this, this coordinate system X, Y as defined in the problem and that's the same xy axis that we want to find the angle that R makes. So theta x, go back up to our picture here, theta x would be the angle that the resultant makes with the positive x axis and theta y would be this angle, the angle that R makes with a positive y axis. Now remember to do these then you can use the direction direction cosines. Direction cosines has to find an angle theta x where theta x is the angle that the vector makes with a positive x-axis. Simply take the inverse cosine of the x component of that vector which in this case is 88.8 .8, divided by the magnitude of the vector which is 260.2. We can get theta x and that comes out to be 70 degrees. So theta y can be done in a similar manner. Cosine of theta 1. I'm sorry. Cosine. Cosine inverse. Okay. Cosine inverse of the y component. So I'll write this one symbolically. Ry over the magnitude. So the y component of the vector divided by the magnitude of the vector. And that comes out to be 20.1 degrees. Now do these answers make sense? Yeah, this, and this angle looks about, 
Okay, that's about 70 degrees. And this angle here, the angle that R makes of the positive y-axis, it's about it's about 20 degrees there. Okay, so there's the answer to part D. And we finished. So hopefully you learned something. See you again. Signing out, Coach Carroll.